Hey Canucks fans, welcome to another edition of Ask Me Anything. I'm Canuck Clay, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Sunday, September the 5th. If you're new, I'll tell you what you should do. Hit the subscribe button for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. Before I get going, don't forget tonight's live stream, 10 p.m., is for members only. I put that link on my community tab, but going forward, um, uh, we'll be going, actually, in about two weeks, we'll start two live streams a week. Actually, it might be as early as next week, so we'll go two live streams a week, and therefore, um, there'll be more opportunities for us to get together. But for tonight, 10 p.m. Pacific, it is for members only. Okay. I put out the call for questions, and this is the most questions I've ever received. In fact, over two dozen. I'll get to about 20 of them now, I, so I didn't, won't be able to get to all of them. I'm, tr- I'm going to try and answer these as thoroughly as I can without rushing. So we'll see. If this ends up being too crazy or too long, then maybe I'll pull back for the next one. But it, it's wonderful that people are asking questions. So let's get going. And we start with Hero, the Hero tier, Just Incredible. Who will have the better season offensively between Hoglander and Podkolzin if they both see top six time this season? Which do you have seeing the bigger upside in the long term for when the Canucks are contending regularly again? Great question, Justin. Justin. I think this season Hoglander will have better offensive numbers even if they both get time in the top six just because I think Hoglander is going to start in the top six and he has a year of experience, NHL experience under his belt and you can't uh, discount that. However, down the road, I think Podkolzin is going to be the more complete player and that's, that's not to say anything about, bad about Hoglander. I think if we can have both of them competing every year for a top six spot, that's just going to make the team stronger. Pod Colson was drafted earlier, uh, first round draft pick, top 10. So I, I do anticipate him to be a tiny bit better long run. But I think both guys are going to be great. Noah, hi Clay, will the media still be held through Zoom this season? No, as long as they are fully vaccinated, media members will be allowed in the locker rooms. And he also, Noah also asks, do you think Pod Colson can be on the penalty kill? I think he can be, but I don't think he will this year. I think Travis Green likes to trust. He needs to be able to trust players, and he's he's not always so quick to give trust out to rookies. So I think you're looking at guys like Dickinson, Sutter, Mott, then someone like ha- Highmore, and then maybe a Pearson and Miller ahead of Pod Colson on the penalty kill. Could even see Connor Garland actually play some penalty kill time as well. Rome Ticklin says, your Vitanen video got me thinking. Do you know if the NHL has a contingency plan in place if an NHL team were ever killed in a plane crash or something similar? Thanks, Clay. No problem, Rome. I, I, I don't know if they have a true contingency plan. I'm sh- like, I don't think they have, for instance, schedules mapped out where if one team can't play anymore. I think the, the NHL would probably pause or at least obviously that team wouldn't be able to play games and then maybe... I think maybe the league would pause for a little bit and let the schedule makers do their thing amidst all the other crazy um, logistical things that would have to happen. Jaskarin, what are your final point predictions for the lotto line and Demko save percentage? I'll say PD gets 85. I say Besser gets 70 and Miller gets 75. Uh, both Miller and Besser get between 70 and 75. Well, that seems a little high. No, let's, let's go with it. And then PD with 85. And then for Demko save percentage, I'll go 917. Quacky then says, what save percentage do you think Halak will get this season? He earns a bonus if he gets 915. So let's say he's going to work hard to get a 915. So I got Demko at 917. And I got Halak at 915. NZ says, this question comes from my dad. His name is Chad. Hello, Chad. I think this is just NZ's way of getting more questions in, but that's okay. Chad says, what was a bigger loss, losing Alex Edler or Chris Tanev? I think... From a player perspective, youth and role, I actually think Tanev is more of an effective player than Edler right now. And then you you couple that with Tanev was the steadying partner for Quinn Hughes. I think for those reasons. And then, yeah, I think Tanev is the bigger loss than Edler. Enzu then says, do you think Pearson makes a power play unit or do you think Hoglander will take a spot? I think you have room for both, actually, because I, I think Pearson, you like the way that he's not afraid to go to the front of the net and he's got a, a decent shot. So let's say, for instance whether you put Garland and Besser, let's just say for, for the heck of it, you put Garland in the top unit. So you have Pedersen, Hughes, Miller, Horvat, and Garland. Your second unit could be someone like a, a defenseman like Ekman Larson or Myers or Rathbone. And then you can have Pearson, Hoglander, and Besser along the front. And then maybe you need a center in there like Dickinson or maybe you change on the fly. So I definitely think that Pearson and Hoglander can both play on the power play for sure. Twisted Rister, which Eastern... 
conference team are you pulling for to get the cup final this year to get to the cup final i've liked them the past few years but more than ever now is jumbo joe and the panthers hello nick thanks for asking the question and uh yeah actually the panthers i know they're many people are picking them to to make it uh really far this year they've kind of been a team that's kind of underachieved a little bit but it looks like they're ready to make the next step i've always liked tampa bay not just because they're defending champions but they're my fourth favorite team in the entire league our third favorite team, it goes Vancouver, Winnipeg, Tampa, and Colorado. So, but I, I, I don't want Tampa to win again as much as I like them. So actually, I agree with your Florida pick. I'm also interested in the Rangers. I think they have a really interesting team. Guys like Adam Fox, Lafreniere, and uh, Capocacco and others. So I think Florida or the Rangers would be interesting to me, um, as opposed to the typical Boston Islanders, Pittsburgh, Washington, Tampa, so on and so forth. Har Simran says this, for... The 24 hour live stream, will you do a watch party for an early NHL game? And do you think that Ovi can break the all time NHL goal record? Yes, I think that Ovi can, but I don't think he will. I, I think um, he, he's just simply not going to score as many goals as he used to. I know it's within reach, but a lot of things got to go right. So I think he'll come close, but I don't know if he'll do it. And then for my 24 hour live stream, yes, I'll be doing the watch party for the second game. The Canucks play on Friday and Saturday. So I'll be doing the watch party for the Saturday game. Johannes says this Do you think. Offer sheets will become more frequent or will GMs keep avoiding it? I think they won't become more frequent just because of this year. Although this is the first one in almost 20 years since the Dustin Penner one. I think it shows that if you do a good one, a well thought out one, and you you catch the team in a tough position, it is doable. Do I think they'll become more frequent? Hmm... I, no, I, I don't think so. I, I think Carolina pounced an opportunity and didn't hurt that they were looking for revenge a little bit from two years ago. But I don't think they're going to come more 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 uh, frequent. The icon, what's your most coveted Canucks possession? Oh, interesting. You know, I don't have a lot of, um, say, paraphernalia aside from jerseys. You know, my son has a hat that Bo Horvat signed when he caddied for him. I have a couple of pennants. Uh, you know, I have a lot of clothing, actually, jackets and stuff like that. But uh, I think my, my prize one is my sign Luongo jersey for sure because he's my favorite Canucks player of all time. Spencer, can Pedersen and Hughes still go to training camp without a contract? No, you must have a contract to go to training camp. So that's kind of like the, the next you know pressure point. Crispy Assassin, do you foresee the Canucks trading one of their forwards or top four, top two D-men in the near future? I don't. I don't. Um, oh, sorry. I read that wrong. Do you foresee the Canucks trading one of their forwards for a top four, top two D-man in the near future? Let's see how this season goes. I think if they're really struggling and, um, but they they have guys making top four money, right? In Ekman Larson, in Myers. So I, let's see how it goes. Um, but I don't think that that's, that's kind of, I, I think the Canucks fully intend to sign Besser this season after the season than Miller and Horvat after the next season. So I don't see that happening. Austin, who will score the first Canucks goal of the season? I'm going to say Connor Garland. Connor Garland gets off to a really good start and in his Canucks career and scores the first goal. Andrew Chang, since Canucks don't have a first-round pick for the last two years, do you think Jim Benning will trade this year's first-round pick? I hope not because I'm planning to go to Montreal for the draft. Yeah, Andrew, that's awesome that you're planning to go to Montreal for the draft. And no, I do not think he will trade it. Um, we see how 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 boring, or I say boring, but... Uh, there's much more intrigue and interest when the Canucks do have a first round pick. So I, I don't think it would be wise if the Canucks gave up their first round pick for a third straight year. So I'm hoping that they do keep it. Adam Broomfield, how many games does Halak win and how many shutouts? Let's say Halak plays 27 games, right? I use that 55 27 split. Of those 27, you need him to win about half of them. So let's say he wins. Um, let's say he wins. No, 15 seems like a lot, right? No, if Demko wins 30. Okay, let's say Halak wins 14 or 15 and he gets two shutouts. Mike, will the will we make the Stanley Cup playoffs in this season? Yes, I do. I think we can finish anywhere between second and fourth. Well, second and sixth technically, but second and fourth in the Pacific. Curtis, if the Canucks are just out of a playoff spot, can come the trade deadline, do they buy, sell, or keep the same roster? If they are out of a playoff spot, they are definitely not going to buy. The, the, the market won't stand for that. So they might sell. Um, but I think if they're just out of a playoff spot, they still might push for it. Um, and then, and then knowing that they have, uh, you know, they have a lot more money coming off the books even next season. So I think, um, uh, I, I don't think they're going to move too heavy, but if they are in a playoff spot and they think they can, 
they can, uh, you know, um, move up a little bit and increase their chances. I could see Benning selling, uh, sorry, buying, um, but I don't think he'll sell. It, I don't, and he definitely won't buy if we are out of a playoff spot. Maestro, do you invest in sports cards? No, I don't. My mom and I used to do it a little bit when I was in elementary school. I think we have a Gretzky rookie. It's not mint. And we have some of the old old peachy packs, but no, not in the past 30 years. And debut hunter, any musically banging Christian music recommendations for the non-believer? Interesting question. As a non-believer, maybe you don't care so much about lyrics, or maybe you do, or you just want the beat. If you're into rap and stuff like that, um, Lecrae is a good rapper for that kind of thing. Um, you know, and for for more pop, a, a group called Jars of Clay is quite popular, even in, in secular circles. And a group called Switchfoot. I don't know if they still do stuff, but I know Switchfoot was quite popular as well. Okay, I did 20 questions in almost 10 or 11 minutes, minus the intro, so not bad. I hope I answered them to your satisfaction. Leave a comment below if you want to react to any of my answers. And members, I will see you tonight at 10 p.m. Shout out to my hero tier of Just Incredible, Lucas Gates, and Nux fan number 29, and to my Hall of Fame members, Jens95, Sim Alexander, Chris Seifert, Adam Broomfield, Shannon Hollingworth, and Andrew Chang. Thanks for your support as always, and thanks for the support of all members of all levels. You are listed in my video descriptions. So leave a comment below. Oh, if you want to become a member of the CCC crew, press the join button underneath this or in my videos on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Can't wait for the season to start. Got big plans. As you know, I made a bunch of those announcements last Sunday. I'll reiterate them at the members chat tonight and then as we get going and start to move ahead with this channel going forward. So thanks again for your support. I really appreciate you. Stay safe. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Leave a comment if you like to and become a member of this channel if you like to. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Members, I'll see you tonight at 10 p.m. on YouTube. God bless. And go Canasco.